uh, what you're looking at right here is the F56 model Mini Cooper and it's quite possibly going to be the last Mini Cooper model ever to be fitted with a internal combustion engine that's right because in the next year the whole thing is possibly going to go full on electric for the entire Mini Cooper wage. We we have seen the Mini Cooper SE finally which is coming this year but we don't know if a petrol c car will actually keep on being late <laughs> this year or not. All, all we know is that from 2021 the whole thing is going electric so right now I have a last mini Cooper model and here's all of the little details you need to know about it Now that we are inside of this c c c car, I might as well explain what's the whole purpose of this c c c car. So, for those who don't know, Mini is a brand that is owned by BMW. And, and Mini is a company which makes cars like the Mini c c Cooper, which is one of the most well-known hot hatches of old time, going back nearly 61 years, uh, back in 1959, and this is the latest production that they have before they release the all new Mini Electric, which is a c c c c car that will be replacing the F56 model. So, what I am going to do right now is go inside and outside of the car and give it a virtual t t t tour. Uh, I want a car and see a lot of features, especially the details which these c c cars have, which you may or may not know about. So then, let's get things off. The car which we have right here uh, is a late 2018 <laughs> model that's featured in a very nice c c c color that's known as st Starlight Blue. It, it's a bit like the podium blue which you get on the above 9595. But there's something about it when you get it in the s s s sunlight, the colour really pops out, and in person it's quite hard to see on c c camera, but on but but in person it's full of so many sp 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 sparkles. It, it's pretty unreal. Now let's get things. Let's get right into the details, kicking things off with this, the Mini logo. So, this is the newer Mini uh, logo which has been used for these newer generation m m models. Only recently been used uh, because the old m m logo used to have like f fixed wings which basically c caught up like that but then they've changed it into kind of like slats which kind of go in line with the slats in within the front grill. Talking about a grill you've also got it's actually quite hard to see because I've got a sun right there but 
in terms of a grill, it's a lot larger than the last one. Um, mainly being because at that time, uh, they were, um, many was going to celebrate 50 years of a uh, Mini Cooper. So, rather than the older model, which had kind of a had like a mouth that was basically half of this, they've I, I decided to keep the heritage in them, and then I I decided to say humongous a growing just like the ones in the 1960s now if we move over to LED lights which is probably the most interesting part for me because I am a massive fan of like tiny little details that, that make such a huge difference and one of those things is of course the front headlight so Firstly, when we when we go right in here, you realise that like right here, there's a there's the mini uh, logo icon that's just there. It's like a tiny little detail, but it's so interesting. And then you've got like all these little lines that go up here, and then you've got those LED bits down there, and then the actual shape of uh, light it's really interesting it kind of reminds me of a giant wedding win <laughs> but then you've got the big led light which goes all the way around which you can easily see there now these are led lights as well as indicators that's right so if you indicate or for those in the us if you use your a blinker these will turn from the white LED light into an orange of the indicator. It's actually quite a c cool feature. Moving on to the side, we will talk about these wheels soon, but I guess while we're here with my own little cat here, Garvey, who's def definitely not camera shy. By any means, I want to talk about this piece here, so you can see that this piece is actually a whole panel in itself, which seems a bit weird. From so the bonnet doesn't actually go to about here; it goes here and then leaks for another panel. Now, the only reason I would think that many did that is because back in the 1960s when the original uh, mini came out the purpose of make, of making the mini was because uh, many want, um, wanted as much room inside of a car as possible so, so they put a door hinges on the outside of the car that meant that you had basically d door hinges like here and here attached to this panel here and then you had a separate separate panel which was for the actual bonnet itself so that's basically what w what I would think is the reason that many did that to this newer uh, c car as kind of, kind of like a homage to the old uh, Mini Cooper, which I think is a really nice idea. So then, the 17-inch two-tone wheels. Not, not a lot of people are fans of two-tone wheels, especially the person who owns this c c car. Also known as my um, mother. Yeah, I do kind of get that to s some people. It may not be their um, personal taste. But I think two-tone wheels, especially when they are done in the in the way that these are done, it just adds a bit more c 
c character and it just it just no longer makes uh, wheels look as as not interesting as they were if if a whole thing was uh, aluminium or if the whole thing was black. I have a key here, which is also quite a nice little qu quick little piece. You've got the, uh, the actual key here in case of if the actual key knob uh, never never ends up working, which is nice. But it, the actual key itself is actually quite nice. You've got a mini logo on the back with, once again, kind of like a semi oval circle thing that's been hi highlighted in, in aluminium and then we really go to the front or back whichever way you want to put it the uh, oval continues but then you've got things that we unlock a lock and a boot pretty, pretty normal but then here's one thing if you press uh, unlock the donors come out, but it's only the our drivers sorry that that actually unlocks. You, you can tell because I can do this to a passing to door, and nothing would c c happen. So I need to press it once more, and now it will open. And then if you want to unlock it, it's basically the same process really. You press once to lock it, but when if you hold it, the d d d donors will eventually close. So anyway, well, I am actually inside the car, I might as well go through all the details that you need to know about oh let's let's the details you may not know about inside the midi's interior now there's one thing that i will actually show you and explain the fact that this car is full of interesting shapes there's one thing that i will say which is none of those car manufacturers will match the interior madness and just uniqueness to this. If you take a look at the interior of a Bow Dragon Polo or or a Golf, and then a for Fiesta, you will begin to, to realize that the interiors kind of built up to look pretty much the same. Not with a mini though. This is just nothing. You, there are bits in this car that you will know of uh, from uh, being to be models. However, it's it's all been done the many way, which I absolutely love about. Doing things like this just really makes it. It just makes c cars just that little bit more interesting, and especially at the price range that the Mini Cooper is at, there isn't a single modern, popular c c car b b b b b brand with such a unique in. Interior. This is, this will be your first person view if you ever tend to, 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 to drive a Mini. It's, it's actually quite nice. Even I would actually like to actually to, 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 to drive like this. Because if you looked it down, you realise that everything is put in, in place 
perfectly f for you and I think I, I think that's a, one more of those little perks that you get inside of mm, minis. Anyway, moving on to the little quirks and features which I like the smallest details and especially in these c c types of c cars you get a lot of d d d detail for the p price. I shall probably make that into like a trending thing from my channel. Detail for the money. There's a big trend around the car for circles and ovals. There's other shapes as well, but ovals and circles is a big trend around the car. Especially in the c c cluster, which is one of the main parts about a modern day mini, which is that uh, you've got a c c c cluster, which is just one giant s s s s s s s s circle that tells you the important things of what you need to know. And then you've got an oval sh shape which goes around the size of the wheel for your uh, climate and cruise controls and your telephones and whatever. You've got a half oval which is for a bottom piece here. More of a d d d d d d d decoration piece, but I love it. Um, uh, of course, here with the uh, center console, especially going down here, you've got a massive trend of circles. So you've got a circle here, which is a massive trend, which has been around since, since the old millies of 1960s. Having that massive oval, the modern day cars though, have moved the, the s s s s circles to then be used as a sc 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 screen, whereas the old cars had the c cluster, which is now here, that used to be right here as like a big oval. You've also got s circles for things like the radio thing. You've got the radio numbers, which is very well known for being in uh, B and W's, except there's more go along this line, but because of uniqueness, it now goes uh, underneath following the circles, which is actually quite interesting. You've got your temperatures here, and then here, and you've got your aircon and all that, also in circles. You've got an amazing uh, start st stop uh, button, which is right in the centre of the whole dash, which I really, really like. Uh, you've also got that for auto st start st st stop. Personally, I would leave that off. But what's also really interesting is is a uh, is the fact that they labelled it as off. So if you if you turn it on, it it goes off. So if you turn it off, it goes on. It's very weird. Of course, you got your things like traction controls, uh, and then you've got uh, and the a, a, a green boat. A green boat g gives you a, a more eco-friendly feel if efficient drive whereas the sp 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 basically does exactly what it says on the tin now the six sp 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 manual gearbox a lot of c c car companies especially that make cars around the price range of these cars don't pay much attention dining of the g g gear lever. Personally I think if you have a manual g g g gearbox being able to feel gear lever in order to 
to interact with a c c car and its engine is a really important thing. But don't tend to bother much. However, these, the way this one's been um, made, is actually very nicely uh, done. And in my c c c case, I think it's one of the best ones I've felt because it, it really makes you want to engage with trying to change gear. Now then, the main part of the center console is also interesting because you've also got, once again, an oval shape right here. Now here, you've got the extra package for a uh, satin nav. So, the normal minis don't normally come with this. But basically, you've got all your things for a, um, for a screen and all that. So that's really nice. Also, there's quite a big theme there as well for circles. Continuing along with with the interior for its little quirks and little features. There's also a big theme of uh, circles and ovals for uh, things like a door and there's a side back here. So, along here, you've also got a semi like oval, which is behind the front seatbelts, which is an interesting place to put one. Uh, you've also got one. That's quite large, that basically ne never ends. <laughs> and you've also got one uh, for uh, armrest. But anyway, m m moving, moving, moving back once again t towards the uh, door. So you've got a big thing of ovals. Massive oval going right through the door here. You've got the circles for the sp speakers and the door handle. That's no bit surprised, but then you've got an oval shape for some reason here. Interesting. <laughs> uh, also, there's circles in the uh, cooling as well. But there's also theme, which is, which is that the shape of this oval, the way it indents, goes in the same same shape as the edge of this c c cooling piece. So if I, if I close the door, you can clearly tell that it, it actually fits in qu quite nicely. Finally then, the back of the car. There isn't a whole lot that's really, really interesting, but around the back, that's mostly got to do with with the rest of the c c car, but there is one more piece which is very cool the Union Jack rear headlights. Once again, this is a bit, this is a bit of a thing that goes back on with theme with the front side uh, p panel here, and of course, the front out. A, 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 a grill here, which is uh, the headlights are made to like pay homage to the older Mini Cooper models, and the re and the reason why is because since the Mini C Cooper first came out all the way to the year two thousand when uh, Mini was bought by. Right, I'll be in the W. It was well known as a b b b British built c car. Cars like these are also built in the UK c c c st st still, but because many is now owned by a B and W, many uh, <laughs> themselves will say. That the car is now a, a German. So the 
Union Jack flag is like a homage to what the original minis were most well known f f f for. So yeah, that's this is basically everything. Okay, these are all of the little d details that you need to know about the F56 model Mini Cooper. I really hope you enjoy uh, watching this video, and uh, I'll I will see you when I can do another video on another car. Hopefully someday I can uh, do it on a on a different c car, but um, till now, thank, thank you for watching.